it's the 600 horsepower AMG X63 that will never happen. The newly introduced Mercedes X-Class pickup comes standard with a four-cylinder gas engine that produces a meager 190 horsepower, 140 kilowatts. If you're looking for a more powerful version, you'll have to wait until 2018, and even that version won't come with an AMG badge, but we can at least dream. Rendered by artist Razai's Roken Rian by way of Instagram, the X-Class looks mean with an AMG makeover, or should we say AMG X63. Apart from the massive new wheels, the concept gains a more distinctive front fascia, including a more open grille to send all that extra air to the hypothetical V8, along with some added cues to the side profile. The artist estimates that AMG might try and shoehorn a 4.0 liter V8 off the E63 under the hood, with a theoretical 612 HP, 456 kilowatts, on tap. That type or power would put it well beyond competition like the Colorado ZR2, Tacoma TRD Pro, and even the upcoming Ford Ranger Raptor. If it all seems too good to be true, that's because it likely is. Mercedes Vans global boss Volker Mornheinweg said in a previous interview that he thinks the X Class is quite impressive already when it comes to styling and so on, and that the product is not right for ABA. The verdict is still out on a possible high-performance V6, though. If it's a more powerful X-Class you're after, you'll have to wait until 2018. The company will introduce an X350D option with as much as 258 HP, 190 kW, and 405 pound-feet, 550 newton meters, of torque for all your high-performance needs, on and off-road. When introduced, Mercedes promises that it will be the leader of the segment, and will include five different driving options, Comfort, Echo, Sport, Manual, and Off-Road.
sometimes you just have to build it yourself. Jurgen Eberle, a design engineer at Mercedes-Benz and his team created a mean-looking rock crawler, the E-Class All-Terrain 4x4 Superscript 2. Before you bust out your checkbook, you should know that it's only a one-shot and currently not for sale yet. Eberly tells Autocar the Extreme E-Class crawler was inspired by the G5004x4 Superscript 2. He says he wanted to see if a similar vehicle could be made using the G500S portal axles grafted in place of the all-terrain's multi-link setup. It took several months to build the E-Class all-terrain, which has more than double the ride height. The fender flares are made of carbon fiber and ground clearance is now nearly 16 inches. It rolls on 20-inch, off-road oriented wheels, and the overall track is now 8 inches wider. The idea excited me right from the start and initial test drives of the all-terrain 4x4 Superscript 2 at the new testing and technology center in Emendingen are demonstrating promising off-road characteristics. Michael Kells, E-Class Chief Engineer, tells the publication. Thanks to the suspension lift with portal axles, the all-terrain 4x4 Superscript 2 is able to cope with even the nastiest rocky and stony runs, it's a really skillful scrambler. It looks like the perfect weekend getaway vehicle too. Let's hope Mercedes-Benz Green lights a limited run for production truck is completely stock, except for the all the modified parts. Over 350 off-roaders will depart Las Vegas Friday morning for the 550 mile Vegas Torino race, spanning varying degrees of Nevada terrain that includes everything from sand and dry lake beds to 8,000 foot mountain passes. Among the vehicles will be a 2017 Chevrolet Colorado ZR2 driven by Chad Hall from Hall Racing, competing in the stock production class for mid-sized trucks and sport utility vehicles. Of course, stock means something a bit different in the racing world, because safety is first and foremost. All CR2 is fitted with a roll cage, racing seats, and safety harnesses, and it also runs a bank of powerful off-road lights for proper visibility at night. The truck also incorporates a two-way radio, a GPS system, and because it's tough to find a gas station in the Nevada desert, there's a 44-gallon racing fuel tank. Chevrolet says the truck runs the stock 3.6-liter V6 engine, which is good for a not insignificant 308 horsepower. It also runs the stock 8-speed automatic, sending power to all four wheels supported by a modified version of the truck's Multimatic DSSV dampers. We don't think that necessarily falls under mandated safety gear upgrades. Beyond that, Chevrolet is also using the truck as a test bed for performance parts that could be available in the future for ZR2 and standard Colorado owners. As to exactly what those parts are, Chevrolet is mum except to say they are components intended to take the already exceptional off-road capability of the Colorado to the next level. So yeah, we won't say the stock truck is a ringer but it's not something you can go down to your local Chevy dealer and buy, either. Whatever those upgraded components are, we know from personal experience that the Colorado ZR2 is already a capable machine in true stock trim. Having put the off-roader through its paces back in May, we found the ride to be surprisingly compliant on-road, while offering exceptional poise on everything from muddy trails to full-on rock climbing. Hall Racing has a rich history in the world of off-road racing, so if the ZR2 passes this test, albeit in not quite stock format, Chevrolet will have certainly earned some bragging rights. What is that? The result of allowing Jeep's head designer to channel his inner 8-year-old and sketch out his wildest dreams. Presumably after eating a load of sweets. It's called the quicksand and it's bloody awesome. Agreed, but what is it? A Jeep Wrangler that's gotten all confused and thinks it's part hot rod, part sand pounding style monster. This is an actual, bona fide working car. And we've driven it. Which pleases our inner 8 year old greatly. What's it for? Well, each year, around the Easter holiday, 
Jeep enthusiasts drive to a remote part of Utah to crawl up some rocks and wax lyrical about how much they love the brand. It's an annual event called the Easter Jeep Safari, where besides scrambling up said rocks, also gives the company a chance to showcase some official concepts. What are those things sticking out of the bonnet? Velocity stacks. An octet of trumpets that feed individual throttle bodies, each with their own port fuel injection system to the 6.4 liter 392 Hemi crate engine good for 485 horsepower and 475 pound feet of torque. All of that power is sent to all four wheels via a pair of Dynatrack axles suspended by adjustable coilovers and a Gitrag 6 speed manual transmission. See, this isn't just a styling exercise as there's proper hardware attached to bring substance. Take the 37IN tires at the back and 32s up front, for example. Yep, the fronts have a 5 inch smaller diameter than the rears, adding to the whole hot rod aesthetic. It's the first Jeep to ever run a wonky tire setup but with BF Goodrich Mudderain T slash a KM2S at each corner, mounted on custom 18IN kidney bean alloy wheels with a center knockoff hub, it can toddle up whatever you put in front of it. Then there's the body. With its chopped, flat roof and vertical back, it's obviously influenced heavily by the early Ford hot rods. Not one panel remains stock, from the hood to the arches, doors, roof, and tailgate. Then the wheelbase has been stretched, the front and rear overhangs have been hacked off, the B-pillar is gone, the fenders have been sliced open, and the windshield and roof have been chopped down. But it's the peerless obsession to detail and hybrid engineering that's won us over. Take that shiny tank up front. That's a nod to the moon tank seen on old dragsters to help aid fuel flow through G-Force. Instead of fuel sloshing around, this new aluminium tank perched between the two exposed frame rails houses a worn winch to pull you out of trouble. Then there's the dragster parachute on the back, instead of being stuffed with a giant air brake, it houses a toe strap. Neat, eh? I bet it sounds good. You're not wrong, kiddo. That big V8 throbs with anger but there's a party trick to the exhaust. Or exhausts. You may have noticed the two fluted foghorn exhausts behind the front wheel so big you can put your head in them with ease. They come straight out of the side of the engine block so make a very, very good and loud noise. But the quicksand features another exhaust system that's actuated via some valves to divert gases either out of the fender well headers or through a muffler and out the back of the Jeep to hush things down a bit. Why you'd ever want to do that, we don't know. Is the interior as wild as the exterior? Course it is. First off, being so tall, climbing in is quite difficult if you've got munchkin legs. And because of the chopped roofline and screen, awkward if you've got a lengthy torso. Luckily the inner 8 year old obviously thought of practicality as it got rid the roof, instead, replacing it with Meccano like roof rails to maintain structural support in the roof's absence. The modern entertainment unit and the dash have been bent in favor of an analog clock, the dials are throwbacks. Weirdly, there's a modern, thick leather steering wheel, borrowed from a Viper, covered in blanking plates where all the modern luxuries normal reside. We'd personally prefer to see a thin-rimmed old-school wooden wheel to complete the look. Two blood-red half-back seats are where you sit, and the rear chairs have been bent in favor of a fuel cell and battery. There's also a chrome cage that shrouds you just in case you end up on the non-existent roof. Come on then, what's it like to drive? Tricky. And, if we're being honest, a bit of a pig. But that makes it engaging and entertaining in a world of 280 miles per hour Bugatti Chirons that your granny can drive. You don't hop in the quicksand for ease of use, you do it for an experience. And it delivers that in spades. See, it's completely devoid of haptic feedback through either the steering or pedals. Due to the seating position, even with the cut arches, you have to use all your spidey sense to work out where the wheels are and what direction they're pointing in. And with no power steering and what felt like single digit psi levels in the tires, low speed maneuvering is your new replacement for CrossFit. Then there's the throttle. 
It feels like it's been lubed up with molten Haribo rather than grease as it's so sticky, and with those individual throttle bodies, means it's rather more like a button. It's either on and you're heading towards a set of trees in a cacophony of noise, or off, where you're crawling along on the gear creep. This makes it interesting off-road, as throttle fluidity and smooth steering are key. And it's hard to do both, especially with three pedals and a gear throw that's measured in feet rather than inches. Doesn't mean it can't conquer the rough stuff though. It's more than capable thanks to plentiful power, Nobla tires, and King coilover shocks, meaning you can crawl over most things. If you get really stuck, you can lock the dips. Or use the winch. Trust us, it's good fun to drive on and off-road. Having to think about what you're doing, balancing the clutch, waiting for the fuel to combust and praying the steering wheels are in the right directions, it's a lot more exhilarating than relying on hill descent and air ride suspension. But it wouldn't make a difference if the quicksand didn't drive at all. The fact it exists is worth celebrating alone. Here, here, to Jeep. For allowing its designers to indulge their inner 8-year-old. British sports car could make the perfect track toy. For most enthusiasts, the appeal of owning a Lotus is all about weight, or rather, lack thereof. This 2000 Lotus 304R, then, should be the perfect anecdote for all you lightweight enthusiasts out there. It lacks a roof, doors, a most of its body panels, and it's currently up for sale on Bring a Trailer. With just 347 miles, 558 kilometers, on the odometer, the Lotus in question is virtually brand new. It's one of just 340 examples ever produced for the 2000 model year, and one of just 8 left-hand drive examples delivered new in the US. Even though it rides on the chassis and mechanicals of a Lotus Elise, it can't be driven on the road due to safety issues, sadly dot power comes courtesy of a 1.8 liter 4 cylinder engine mounted in the rear. The 177 horsepower, 131 kilowatts, and 126 pound-feet, 170 newton meters, of torque are rooted through a 5-speed manual gearbox. Though it may not sound like much, remember that the entire package tips the scales at just under 1,150 pounds, 521 kilowatts, allowing it a 0 to 60 mile per hour, 96 kilometers per hour, spurt of just 4.4 seconds, and a top speed of 133 miles per hour, 214 kmh, dot the interior, while entirely driver focused, is scarce. Apart from blue Alcantara accents on the door panels, steering wheel, and seats, the 340R lacks creature comforts like carpets, an infotainment screen, and a stereo. A fire extinguisher is mounted forward of the passenger seat, just in case. The car has been listed for sale multiplied times, but this is the second time in a little over a year that it has been listed publicly. Last March, a seller on eBay was asking $65,000 for the rarefied Lotus. Interested buyers can head over to the bat listing where hopefully they can take it home for a bit less than that.